All right, so continuing on our tour, I think this is the uh, this is the ninth team. Yeah, so the ninth team we're doing. So this is Rich and uh, St. James Infirmary, because Rich runs his team like a hospital, um, funny enough. So we'll just dive in. So 14 overall, $39, Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen's a strange, strange player in fantasy. He's, he's what I like to say is exactly the type of player I don't want. Uh, but to his credit, he's super duper consistent. I mean, oh, gosh, what? He's only age 30, only age 30 now, going into year number 10 in uh, fantasy. He is still who I consider to be the best route runner in football. Um, he's just such a technician out of the slot with the uh, Chargers. He's caught at least 97 passes the last five years, and he's never been worse than 13th in those five years. So why, why is he someone that you wouldn't want on your team, Dylan, you ask? Well, because he's never really had that super-duper incredible Devo Samuel, Justin Jefferson um, type of year, and I've kind of just been honestly waiting for him to kind of drop off even with all of the quarterback changes that have gone on with the chargers after philip rivers but he's found his saving grace after philip rivers with justin herbert uh, they have good rapport i i can't really argue with he's going to get another thousand yard season he's going to get another seven touch six or seven touchdowns uh, he's not much of a red zone threat which is really another thing i don't love about him but and he's like a heavy, short yardage guy. But really, he's kind of like taking the baton of the Wes Welker, Julian Edelman kind of slot guy. He's just a real technician in the slot. Really, really, really great route runner. Uh, I just, honestly, I just wish he got the ball more. I think he will again probably be around 13th um, as a fantasy player. He's super duper safe, which is why you're drafting him around here. He's probably right around what Brian paid for for Michael Pittman Jr., and he paid 38 So, like, it's right about his price tag. Um, and he's a tremendous route runner. He's more along the lines of, like, a very solid wide receiver, too. But as your wide receiver one, he's very, very safe. You know he's going to be healthy the entire year and give you good production most of the year. Um, I don't think, what is it? Yeah, like last year, how many, how many? He missed one week in 17 games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yeah, so he gave you 16 games. He missed one game, and he 12 of those weeks he had double-digit points. So he never got, he never hit 20. Uh, but still, you know, when he scores touchdowns, he has a very good game, and otherwise he just gets a lot of work. So... He's not my cup of tea. He's a very safe player, but for the price, he's quality. So 19 overall, $69, Alvin Kamara. Okay, going rate of running backs. I thought, you know, maybe going in, hey, you know, maybe we'll get like a deal on Alvin Kamara. Maybe people are scared off by the suspension. Because me personally, if he was going to be suspended, I think he would have been suspended by suspended by now. But since the court case... Hasn't even gone to trial yet. I don't think that's supposed to go till during this season. I don't think he'll get suspended during the season with the court case. I think he'll be at the end of the season. Um, but yeah, we're entering in year six, and he has done five consecutive years as a top ten fantasy running back. He was number eight last year, so he wasn't the number one fantasy running back like he has been in the past. But he, I mean, Drew Brees is gone. But, and his efficiency wasn't as great without Breeze. However, without that, efficiency has come volume. Kamara gets the ball a lot. Kamara's the best player offensively on the Saints. J James Winston, newsflash, isn't really all that good. Um, Kamara's going to get the ball a lot. So he may not get, like, a 1,000 yards rushing, but I could see... 900 yards rushing, and then another 500 yards receiving, so 550, so 1,500, close to 1,500, 1,400, 1,500 yards, 
as a running back, and that's the number one running back. Do I love the price? No. I mean, I don't love the price. Uh, he's right. I mean, we paid more for Kamara, I suppose, because he's safer and healthier than McCaffrey and Henry. So, like, I mean, that's good. But he's also the same price as Austin Eckler, who was the number two running back in fantasy last year. Maybe Eckler doesn't reach those heights, and we have seen um, Kamara be the number one. I just don't know if Winston's going to be the guy to be able to do that with him. But, again can't squabble too much about it. I had him as like a $65 player, so it's not like you overpaid all that much, really. Well, what's a few bucks? So, I like Alvin Kamara. I was actually hoping to possibly get him at a bit of a discount, and there was no discount uh, on Alvin Kamara. Next, 34 overall, $54. Here's our breakout player. We paid for him at price, Javante Williams. So I talked about Javante Williams extensively last year, how I thought he was the best running back in uh, rookie running back. And, yeah, he looked really great. Um, I said before, I will say it again, Javante Williams looks like a carbon copy of Aaron Jones, just like Melvin Gordon looks like a carbon copy of Jamal Williams. So it really frustrated me that it was a 50-50 split last year. It frustrates me that Melvin Gordon is now back in Denver and we're just like, oh, we're going to give Melvin Gordon the ball. No, no. Just like Aaron Jones had to push aside Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift had to push aside, again, Jamal Williams, Javante, Ad Javante Williams has to push aside Melvin Gordon because he is elite. Um, he's an elite pass catcher. Uh, he has elite tools. He has really good jump cut. He has very good vision. He has good long speed. He's good acceleration. He's not a great pass blocker, which is why Gordon can be on the field sometimes, but he's a good receiver. He has very soft hands. He's very good at reading coverage. Javante Williams, efficiency-wise, was just a little bit less efficient than Aaron Jones. And I've talked about before that Aaron Jones' efficiency – he was the most efficient running back since Barry Sanders. So, like, that's the realm of what Javante Williams is in talent. He is incredibly, incredibly talented. I mean, if we're talking the most talented running backs in football, if you take everything, I think the most talented guy is probably Saquon, barring injury. But I think Javante Williams is in that ballpark. I think they're around that realm. And he has all of these elite tools. So... I'm hoping for you, as well as for him, that Melvin Gordon takes a back seat to him because, frankly, the Packer, like they brought in the Packers uh, offensive coordinator as the head coach, and frankly, he ought to recognize that, oh, hey, I have an Aaron Jones, and it's Javante Williams, and if Aaron Rodgers is my Russell Wilson, then if Russell Wilson is my Aaron Rodgers, then Javante Williams is my Aaron Jones. Um yeah, no, his ceiling is stupid high. He's only 22. So the range of outcomes is high, though, as well, because will he get the workload? That's really the question. I have no questions about health. I have no questions about talent. Will he get the workload? Because if I'm being honest, like, I know Andre really likes, he really likes Russell Wilson, and I talked about how much I like Corlin Sutton, and I think Jerry Judy has quite a bit of talent. If we're going just purely on talent, I think Javante Williams, out of all of those guys, is the most talented. Um, he can do it all. And I I liked, I was surprised when Denver trade up for him last year, uh, but seeing him play on his own, just incredible, incredible talent. So I'm hoping for you that he gets his, he gets like, this is not a 50-50 timeshare. I want like a 70-30 timeshare because if he gets like 230 some odd carries, they're getting 1,000 yards. He's probably getting another 500 yards receiving if he gets the ball enough. So 50, 50 receptions, 500 yards receiving, $1,500 player. If he reaches that ceiling, he is a top five back. He's around what Kamara is. Now, granted, you paid a much lower price at 54 to 69, but... That's because we haven't seen it. And we haven't seen it because he's in a timeshare because Melvin Gordon steals some of those shares. So my hope is 
they use him properly, they give him the ball, and that you just kind of let him be the guy. Like, he is good enough to build an offense around. He really is. And I know there's quite a few running backs. I mean, I, I really like DeAndre Swift coming out. I, Javante Williams is better than Deion, uh, uh, DeAndre Swift. Um, there's quite a few running backs in the NFL that I like. I do a lot of research on these guys. But Williams, pound for pound, is one of the best. So, will he get the workload? That is the question. I don't know. They brought back Melvin Gordon for reasons unknown. I would have brought in some sort of running back. Like, they also brought in Mike Boone, too, from Minnesota, which was weird. I guess he's, like, the third string. Why did you bring in the third string running back? So, that's a bit frustrating. I think Williams, because of Melvin Gordon, will probably not reach the ceiling. But that is the ceiling. Um, the ceiling is a top three fantasy, top five fantasy running back, but I think with Melvin Gordon time, kind of taking some timeshare, you might have bit, uh, you might have overpaid a little. So he's still, but he's still a top fifteen running back. I mean, he was top sixteen last year, so he's probably a top ten running back. But really, the hope is he gets the volume because, I mean, gosh, he just he's so. He, his vision is one of the best. He has some of the best vision in the NFL. He can just see it before it happens. And I really, really wish Melvin Gordon wasn't there. So if Melvin Gordon wasn't there, I probably would have paid seventy dollars for Javante Williams. That's how much I believe in his talent. Uh, but we will see. I mean, we haven't seen it, and I got to see what the timeshare looks like again. As I sent Andre's video, there's a lot of unknowns in Denver. Because, uh, I mean, they're bringing over the Packers offense, but it's still, what exactly will this timeshare look like? So, I like him a lot. I think he's in a good situation. The offense line's better. They brought in someone who can use him just like who he's kind of a clone of, which is Aaron Jones. Hopefully they do the right thing and give him Aaron Jones kind of workload now. Instead of just like, for years I was saying, free Aaron Jones. Now I'm saying free Javante Williams because, like, these guys are too – they're just too good to just be like, oh, we're going to give him the ball, like, 15 times. You need to give, them, give that man, like, 25 carries a game. You need to feed him the ball because he will win you games by himself. Just give him the ball. So, yeah, really like Javante Williams. Just a question of volume. But because we set, spent so big on our first three, we then went 55 $7, George Kittle, tight end. So we know some people, Brian, doesn't like tight ends. Kittle was good. I think he was, he's was. he been very inconsistent, um, especially with Jimmy G. Debo Samuel was incredible last year. George Kittle was okay. He had like over 900 yards and like six touchdowns. So he was serviceable, like flex-ish kind of player. But for seven bucks, I mean, you can't really beat that. Like, that's a better deal than some of the other guys that were going around there. Like, hell. Um, Marquez Valdez Scantling went for seven dollars. George Kittle was better than Marquez Valdez Scantling. He will be, he will have a better season than him. Um, so I don't really squabble with the price too much. I like him. He's a good player. It's really just can he stay healthy? Because durability's been an issue because he's missed 13 games the last three years. Uh, but, I mean, he's a starter for you on your team, I think. I would just plug him in at basically, like, flex. So, we're kind of filling the holes. That's a good that's a good price on a good player. And you need to go budget players. $69, $3, Miles Sanders. So, I mentioned it before with Sarah and Antonio Gibson and Robbie with Kareem Hunt. Miles Sanders is one of the best deals in our draft this year. He was one of the best deals. He's a starting running back. On a good team with a great O-line, and you got him for $3. Now, I've been talking about this for forever with Philadelphia. The thing I don't like about Philadelphia is the fact that they almost, I mean, they just basically, it's always a committee. I hate it. Like, Boston Scott is not that good. Sorry. I like Kenneth Gainwell. I think he's talented, but I've always thought Miles Sanders was more talented. The problem is with Miles Sanders is he doesn't have great vision. He has the speed, but he does not have the vision. So, like, it's just very frustrating for me watching him year after year get, like, 150-some-odd carries, feeling like he ought to get more yards, and then he doesn't. Last year he got zero touchdowns. Um, he got 
I think he was like one of the first players in the last like 30 years to get over 750 yards and no touchdowns. So he's not much of a pass catcher. That's Kenneth Gainwell. They don't give him the goal line work. That's Boston Scott. Not to mention Jalen Hurts is there. But it's still a run-heavy offense. And Miles Sanders is bound to have touchdown regression. So he's got to score this year. I think I'm going to be a little bit bullish on him. I'm going to give him a 1,000 th- yards, and I'm going to give him six touchdowns. And that's going to make him a viable RB2, and you got him as your flex, and you're going to be like, that is a steal. And he is. I really do like the talent of Miles Sanders. Again, it's just about the volume. But I think, you know, I mean, they brought in Trey Sermon, and Nick Sarani is, like, talking about the committee. They love to run the ball. And even if Jalen Hurts is going to get his, I think Miles Sanders is a really good compliment to him. And he's bound to just purely out of chance, he's bound to score more than zero touchdowns. I don't think he's fantastic, but he's a starter in our league. And as a flex, you can't beat that for $3. That's a great play, especially because he's a running back, and fighting running backs in our league is rough. So, excellent, excellent, excellent pick. Um, Great, great deal. At $117, $9, Robert Woods. So, Woods got traded from the Rams after he blew out his knee. They won a Super Bowl. He got traded to the Titans. Apparently, he's healthy. So... He had, I know he's a favorite of Brian's. He had three straight years of being a top 15 receiver before last year. Last year was like 49th because of the injury. Uh, But he's only age 30. He had like five touchdowns. He had, he was having a good season, but that was on a pass heavy offense. This is a run heavy offense. Now, granted, I believe in him much more than I believe in Traylon Burks. We went into that. Someone's got to catch the ball in Tennessee. I think it's going to be Robert Woods. Do I think he breaks 1,000 yards? I don't think so. He'll get close, maybe like 900. He'll get like five touchdowns. So he's like a serviceable player. Um, He's kind of like right around, I would put... He's probably going to be right around what Kyle Pitts went did. And I didn't love Pitts at 11. That's kind of what I feel about Woods. I think it's an overpay for nine, just because the offense isn't great, and he's coming off a big injury, so we don't know how healthy he is either. Uh, But he is, when he plays, he's a good, solid player. He's right around a flex territory receiver, which getting Sanders now to be your flex means that Woods is probably your number two, I guess, because... Kittle's kind of there, so basically like your number three, which isn't bad. He's a starter, so I don't disagree with that. I just, there were better deals to be had than him, but he's not bad as, for what I got him. Like the nine bucks isn't that bad. So we've kind of filled out the starting lineup like that. Um, $129, $5, Brandon Ayuk. Um, funny, I was trying to trade, for, trade with you for Brandon Ayuk, um, and we'll go into why. So Brandon Ayuk's season was like a season of two halves. I think Justin overpaid for him thinking he'd be the breakout, and funny enough, Debo Samuel was the breakout. Ayuk was in the doghouse. I think the first seven weeks, he was averaging like one reception a game. It was awful. He was terrible. The last ten weeks or so, that jumped up to like seven So he was like a top 25 receiver for those 10 weeks. So he finished exactly 35th as a wide receiver in fantasy with 826 yards receiving and five touchdowns. That's a roller coaster. I think he was on three different teams last year. Um, What I don't like about this is you've already got Kittle. You got Kittle for seven. You spent five on Ayuk. There's only so many, like, I like Trey Lance. I think Trey Lance will be an upgrade on Jimmy Garoppolo. But I don't know how much there is really to go around. Like, Debo Samuel is the guy. It's Debo's offense. Um, We have Elijah Mitchell. Uh, We have George Kittle. 
So doubling down on the same offense with the wide receiver, not great. He's top 10 in yards per target and run after catch, which is why he's on San Francisco. I think he'll get his 800 yards and like six some odd touchdowns, which makes him like a top 35-ish receiver again. There's the possibility for more, but I don't like that roller coaster. And I especially don't like that he's on the same team as Kittle, and you own both of them. Because if you own both of them, if one scores a touchdown in the game, I almost guarantee the other's not going to. So I had Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews last year, and when they were both rolling, I was rolling. But when they were both bad, I was bad. It was not fun. So is he a starter for you? Technically speaking, he's like a flex starter. But if you're starting both him and Kittle, you're probably going to lose those weeks. I would definitely highly suggest that you ought to trade him. If not to me, if you're looking for someone else, a good suggestion would be someone like Warren, who owns Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool. You guys should probably swap Ayuk for Claypool. I think Ayuk went for 5, Claypool went for 6, Claypool went 105, Ayuk was pick 129. They're right around the same kind of category of players the right around the same 35th overall receiver and that way at least you guys could like split up like her shares in those Steelers and your shares in the 49ers that would be a suggestion I don't know if you'll actually do it sometimes people don't listen to me but I like Ayuk I think he's got a lot of talent I don't like the roller coaster and I especially don't like him teamed up with Kittle that's too many shares of an offense I'm not sure about when I feel like they're going to run the ball a lot so after that, 135, you came in, you sniped my guy. I, um, I was hoping for get to sneak in for a dollar. Uh, well, I was putting him up for a dollar. Matthew Stafford, who won a Super Bowl. like that for Matthew Stafford. I don't know if he'll be as incredible as he was last year. I mean, 41 touchdowns, almost 4,900 yards passing. He has an elbow injury actually right now, which isn't great. It's a bit worrisome. I mean, they say he has no limitations on his right elbow discomfort, but it's kind of like a baseball injury. He's like, it's very sore, like right here. And I'm not really worried about him in week one. I'm worried about him like later on the season. So that's something to keep an eye on. He was the number six fantasy quarterback last year. He offers no rushing, funny enough. Um, so kind of like, I think I'll take a bit of a step back, but you'll still get like 30 some odd touchdowns, 4,300 yards. Sounds exceedingly similar to, like, the Dak Prescott's, the um, Kyler Murray's, the Russell Wilson's. There's all these guys who are just around this same area, and I can't really differentiate between all of them. It's more about, like, schedule, but lucky for him, high-powered offense. They love to throw, great play caller, good offensive line. He'll more than likely be a top seven-ish quarterback in fantasy and I can't really as long as you pay attention to the injury I can't like argue with the price again quarterback is super duper underpaid in our league so yeah no like him uh 186 Ronald Jones dollar he's the fourth string running back on the Chiefs I mean I'm happy he made the Chiefs I don't think he gets 50 carries or 200 yards this year I don't love the fact that he's the fourth string running back and like on a team with the running backs that I don't really like, like Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Isaiah Pachenko, like that's rough. So, I mean, if you want to take a shot on his talent, that's fine. I don't believe in him. He was a top 25 running back in 2019, 2020. And then Leonard Fournette comes in and steals the job and he wasn't very good last year, but you know, Maybe he comes back. I guess you're hoping for, I would just cut him. Um, $198 Kenny Galladay. Two years ago, Kenny Galladay had, what was it, 11, 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns? No, this is this is 2019, so three years ago. Um, 2020, he only played five games, and then he signed a huge deal with the Giants, who were paying him a ton. And after he was first in touchdowns, 
in twenty eight in twenty nineteen he has been pretty bad. Just like I kind of said, I thought Robbie Anderson was washed up. I think Kenny Galladay's washed up. He just, those ankle injuries look like they've done some wear and tear on him. I know he's only 28 and he's 6'4 and he's like a vertical threat, but like I don't love the Giants offense. We already have quite a few teams who have invested in the Giants offense at receiver. So we have Justin with Kadarius Tony. We have... Patrick with Wandale Robinson, and you got Kenny Galladay. He is the number one receiver, technically speaking. I don't think he's going to get the work because he just he looks old and slow. He can't get out of his breaks very quickly. Danny Dimes isn't very accurate. If I'm picking a guy, it's probably going to be it's Kadarius Toney, who had a 189-yard receiving game last year. I mean, that would make up for, like, a fifth of what, no, that would make up for roughly almost half of what Kenny Galladay gave last year. Whew, I don't think he gets to 50 receptions. I don't think he gets to 700 yards. He's a cut candidate for me just because, like, he just looks washed up. I mean, if you want to keep him for a few weeks and see if he shows you something, he was three years ago a top 15 receiver. But you got to show me because he's a look bad. Just two years in a row, he's looked bad. Just like Robbie Anderson last year, he just looks he looks slow and old, and he, he just can't. He, it was never about being able to route run. It was always about being physical and out jump, and he just his ankles just have slowed him down a lot. 208 a dollar, Devontae Parker. So, after seven years in Miami, Miami's like, now nah, we're changing our offense. We need more speed like San Francisco. Get rid of Devontae Parker. Things I like about Devontae Parker. Um, well, he was the 11th best fantasy wide receiver in 2019. So that's three years ago. Um, he has only been he- healthy for one entire season, though, which was that year. He missed seven games last year. But I would say he's probably the number one on New England. And while he's not great, he's not good at getting separation. We'll just say that. He is a great jump ball specialist. I guess maybe that's kind of a theme here with you, if I'm being honest. Like Robert Woods, Kenny Galladay, Devontae Parker, all older receivers who aren't very good route runners, aren't very fast, but they're jump ball specialists. So... More so than Galladay, I think Parker has some upside depending on what the Patriots offense looks like. The Patriots offense is a great unknown because Josh McDaniels is gone. And now Matt Patricia or Joe Judge is calling the plays and I'm not they're not great. So there will be weeks when Devontae Parker is startable. There will be weeks where Devontae Parker is terrible. I think he'll break eight hundred yards, I think he'll get five touchdowns. When will that be, and when do you play him? I don't know. But he's a borderline flex in our league. That's not bad for a dollar. He's definitely someone that I keep an eye on, just hoping that Mac Jones gets a little bit more pass-heavy, and because Parker is the most talented receiver on that team. But we'll have to see. I don't really know how that's going to break, just because the Patriots have really kept it under wraps, what the offense will look like. 217, Tyler Higby for a dollar. Um, I mean, I'll make this super short. Tyler Higby's not a top 10 tight end. I'd cut him. Uh, he offers you little to no upside if we're picking options in the Rams offense. I'm picking Cam Akers, Daryl Henderson, um, Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup, and Van Jefferson all before him. So he's like the sixth option in the Rams offense. Uh... Yeah, maybe he gets you like five touchdowns, but just like he's worse than some of the other back end guys we went over on some of the other teams. Like, what is it? We went over with Andre. He has like, uh, he just took Russell Gage. And then Sarah has someone like Dawson Knox. And Patrick has like Sammy Watkins. Yeah, I look at him like Sammy Watkins. Uh, Higby's just not going to do anything for you. 
I'd cut him today and just go grab somebody off free agency because, what, how many receptions did he have? He was on a Super Bowl winning team that's super pass heavy, and he still barely broke 60 receptions in a year when the guy almost threw 5,000 yards. It's, there's no chance, there's no upside. <laughs> it's not going to get better. Um, maybe he cracks 50 receptions. Uh, he's not, I'm not even sure he's a top 15 tight end, let alone top 10. So I, there's no upside here. Uh, he's not a player that would be on my team. Um, and 225, J.J. Taylor, running back dollar. J.J. Taylor has been since cut by the Patriots. He has not been signed. Um, he's been signed, what, to their practice squad? So he's like the, technically, if the other four running backs ahead of him all got hurt on the active roster, I guess he could play. But, yeah, he's not relevant. So, again, another cut guy. So... We kind of did the thing that we usually do with Rich, which is kind of where like we're a bit top heavy, and we don't have very much depth. But I suppose Kenny Galladay has maybe we'll see if he has something. Give it a few weeks, and you know maybe you know Ronald Jones on talent is one of the more talented running backs on the Chiefs, but Higby and Taylor are useless. But that's beside the point. If we're talking overall construction of the team, I like the team. It's a good, well budgeted, solid team. Um, I don't mean to give you the lowest score that I've given, uh, but you're not an above average team just because like there, there's like the only saving grace on upside for you is Javante Williams. If Javante Williams has the kind of volume that he, I think he ought to have, if he has like a top three Aaron Jones season, then yeah, you could be dragged into like a top four seed in the playoffs. But there's really nowhere else that I see of anyone else being able to break out. You're kind of just hoping Keenan Allen has a Keenan Allen year. And Robert Woods is healthy. And George Kittle is healthy. And Miles Sanders gets the ball. And Matthew Stafford stays healthy. And Brandon Ayuk's not in the doghouse. It's mostly just kind of like a home hum guys. So, but even more so... Than that, I mean, I like Kamara. I suppose Kamara could be your saving guy, but it's just the depth really hurts you on the back end. And I know with you specifically, you're you're not going to make that very many moves. Like average year, I'm making like a hundred and ten. Well, last year, we'll we'll check, we'll check to make sure so I don't like quote myself and then it's all messed up and people are just like mad at me about it. So we'll check right now what it was last year before I say anything. So hold on. Standings. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So a good example of this. So I made 126 moves last year. I'm an outlier. I made a lot of moves. However, average team in our league going by average made 65, 65 moves last year. You made 28. You were in the bottom three in moves made. Last, bottom four. There was some, yeah, bottom four in moves made last year. So are you... I know, like, basically we're going to watch the team and kind of sit on it and we'll... Hope it breaks out, and then when they break down, then we're going to try and trade things off. We're not going to be proactive. We're going to be reactive. That's just kind of what how it goes with, uh, with you specifically. And that's okay. I mean, I think the team is good. I think it's probably a playoff team. Really, the concern is, I mean, you're lucky you got such a great deal on Sanders at three to get you a third running back because you are better off than some of these other teams who have no running backs myself included. So I will give you, I'll give you a C plus. I can't give you a B minus if only because like there are things like George Kittle, Robert Woods, Kenny Galladay, Devontae Parker, Brandon Ayuk. Like there's, other than the Ayuk there, there's like not a whole lot of upside for more. I would have really loved to have taken some good dollar backs or guys who might break out um we didn't do that but the team's all right <laughs> did you just oh 
Wow, did, I think you literally just changed your name of your team to set lineup by Thursday. Um, point is, I guess I guess we'll have to ch check and make sure that's right. Yeah, you did. You literally just, as I'm making your video, you set your you change your team name to set lineup by Thursday. Well, I hope you remember that because really, the main thing is this, Rich. If nothing else, if you don't take anything away, anything else away from this. Even if you keep J.J. Taylor, even though he's completely useless, the main point of this whole video is if Javante Williams is who I think he is, if he gets that volume, and if Alvin Kamara has an Alvin Kamara year, then you have a title contender. I just don't think that will happen. But if that does happen, it's in the realm of possibility, you got to do an average number of moves, like an average team, to get that team there. So you don't have to like the 126 like me, but you gotta do around the 60. You gotta double up your the amount of effort you did last year. You did 28, you gotta do around 60. But if you do that, and both those things happen, you will be a con title, title contender. I'm just hedging my bet and saying that's probably not gonna happen. So that's where I get it in the C plus. But still, I don't hate the team. I think the team is good. The saving grace is Sanders at $3. That's such a steal of a deal. And really, that really highlighted that you were paying attention during the draft, and I appreciate you for that. So, yeah, I guess the team name is now set lineup by Thursday. Lo and behold.